I'll try not to go past like six cents scale because I'm an angel. I can talk really bad. So, as uh, Justin said, I am a registered dietitian. I also have my PhD in exercise science, and I love to eat and work out. So I just decided after I got done school, I wanted to open my own gym. So today, I'm going to talk to you guys about fitness for women. So um, I also have done some stuff in some books. Like there's this guy Luke here that asked me to write the rule of living for women back in the day, and and then I also collaborated with him to the different body guides. So there's some branding that went along in there, and that's what we all kind of got to do with a lot of things to keep ourselves alive in this industry. So I kind of one girl up there was saying she wanted to open her own facility, and I said, well. You know, you become an adult, you have to realize that, you know, it's so great, you have to go to gym, but it's like you have to be your own insurance, you have to save your own retirement, no one's helping out these fields. So we should have a, a, a symposium on, you know, running our business and the realities of being a business owner because it's not all like flowers and daisies. So, so my gym is called Fitness Revolution, I'm part of Fitness Revolution Nation, I'm coached by Nick um, Harry and Patrick B. So my business coaches, and we're voted one of the best places to work out in our area. I need pretty strong women. So uh, this is the facility when I just opened it in the summer. It's actually since changed. I've done a lot more teaching, but it's a just open floor format, and I don't have a lot of machines in there. I'm getting more squat racks and whatnot, but I had to, you know, I didn't have them in my basement like John did. <laughs> I'm waiting for my parents to let me store them there next um, And then, again, we create strong women. I have a lot of women that train with me when they're pregnant. Uh, we don't know their tobacco plant. She's pregnant. We, you know, encourage women to open up press and do stuff that they're in the fidelity for and lift heavy weights. So we, this is our, our goal, is it's strong fit women. Um, and then we do a lot of community building stuff. So, yes, I do run. It's like, don't run a 5K, but we all like to handle America, um, so what I found from working with women in my facilities and just from being a woman myself is that what women want is we want to be strong. We want to be like, and I will throw that word out there, profit, because that's the thing nowadays. But we want to be this girl, profit, profit. Like we want to be that, you know, the girl wearing the high socks doing the deadlifts and looking good doing, and you know, we don't necessarily want to look like that. That is not what you're going to market to women. If unfortunately, if you gave that to your girlfriend, it would probably motivate her to death. Um, because we want we want to still look feminine but be strong, and that's just the way it goes. Um, you know, we, uh, it's funny that when you get the same picture, yeah, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, three pictures online. <laughs> so you know, this is what we see. These, these are the images. Like I, I honestly don't work out in a sports bra, and I don't know if many people here that probably do, but we do want to be fit and strong, but we want to still look like women. We don't want to look like that. <laughs> and if you don't want to look like that, there's like nothing. I'm not against that, that's fine. I mean, everyone has their own place, but 99% of the women I know do not want to do that. So we want to be strong. That's uh, Girls Gone Strong. I'm actually working with Molly right now on a book she's coming out with. I did, I'm doing the nutrition portion of it, so we're coming up with a Girls Gone Strong product. And we, we, women are out there to be strong. You know, strong is the new city. Um, I clean, I jerk, and have my snatch. Like these kind of cool things are out there for women. And, and it's more popular now. And I say it's more popular now because when Lou and I did the Girls of Lifting for Women, we were still just saying, girls, it's okay, you can lift heavy, and you're, you're not going to get big, and you don't have the testosterone. I think that's been happening. Right? We know this now. So we're now in the area where we're telling women, Work hard, eat clean, talk dirty, you know, you have a nice sandwich. Like so it, this is what we want and this is what we're going for now. So let's, let's start hammering home. So how do women get what they want? So they have to do things like chiropractic. They have to squat deep or maybe not, depending on their Okay. And, um, <laughs> try to stay away from the shoes now. Um, <laughs> but I do stay away. But they have to do it their way, though. So we're not going to look like that deadlift guy with the veins popping out, like, oh, that's the, you know, um, whatever. We still are doing it our way, but we're, we're making it a little bit longer. The problem with women is that women typically struggle more with their self-worth than men do. So even though they can get out there and be very strong and be very fit, they still doubt their ability to do it and for the confidence you know, in order to achieve their goals. So this is from Jill Pullman. She's, she's big in the fitness industry. She had a blog saying eight ways to avoid a comparison trap. And you just, these are things that women always do. Men don't. You don't hear men saying their own flaws are always magnified to yourself. You don't appreciate your own badassness. 
comparing physiques without consideration of all the other ways you're working the same. You will always find someone who's physique is cleaner, more ribs, or more tighter, harder than yours. And finally, let's be honest, people always put their best clothes on them. No, the guys aren't out there being like, hey dude, it's okay. You know, your thighs aren't that big. It's all right. You squat less, it's a bit smaller. You know, it's, that's not what men are hurt. And women, we do this. We always compare. We always feel like we're not good enough. Um, and that and that we can't do certain things because we'll look a certain way or we we'll, won't look a certain way. So we have to work harder with women and building their self-esteem, building their confidence, just like the weight loss clients that Lou is referring to, build confidence as well as educate so that they know they know what is going to happen when they weight train and how to do it. And that is going to make them feel better. Um, you know, these are other things you'll see women looking at, you know, it's not about the number on the scale. A lot of times when women start lifting heavy, the number on the scale goes up and they freak out. I don't know how many times I've women starting my gym and they're like, I've gained five pounds last month. And I'm like, you're close to any different? No. Okay, what's the problem here? Mm-hmm. I gained five pounds. I'm like, it's just the scale. And we look at this, the number on the scale, does it tell you yourself or you know, all these sort of things. But women do typically judge themselves by numbers. So as long as you can remind them that you know weight training may change their body weight, but it's not going to change their body shape necessarily right away until they get stronger and fat melts off and then it's not just now, but they lose fat gain muscle. And then there's a different look. But one of the girls in my gym was saying, my body is completely different. She's been training me with me for a year now. She's like, I've got great thighs, my butt's really round and my stomach's flat. And Shoulders are wide, and I was like, "That's bad thing." No, but I'm so used to being this skinny, stick girl, and I like this. My husband likes it too. <laughs> but I do have the girls that come to me that say they don't want to gain muscle, and then I think there's one like, "There's a running people." Okay, and the difference between women and men is that women will typically look in the mirror and say their butt looks too big, but the guys will look in the mirror and say, "I look amazing." <laughs> and women have to remind it that having a butt is good. So my butt is big and round like the letter C. In 10,000 lunges, it has made it rounder, but much smaller, and that's just fine. The space here for the side of my bed is my back for those walk behind me. Or a colleague that hurts skinny women away from the best meals like holding tails. My butt is big and that's fine, and for those who might squirt on her way, it's good. That's probably the best Nike hat I've ever seen. And that girl does have a great. But women typically have to be understand that having a big butt is a good thing because we still have images of the skinny shape models or even women's all making sadly that, you know, there was an issue that says create the best butt ever and this girl had like no butt. I said that's it's kind of ironic when you put the girl like no butt on the cover of the little butt best butt ever. So I was like I'm here. I'm reminding women that strength comes in all different shapes and sizes and that women need to train their body type. Don't try to put up the picture of this small, I hate using the this girl, if you look like this girl. And this girl, is, that's fine. If that's her size, that's her shape, go for what your body is going to, you know, fit into. Don't try to fit into someone else's body if you're never going to be there. So all shapes and sizes are all beautiful and reminding women of that because women are more concerned about being a different size and shape than another woman than guys are. Guys don't completely I look like Brad Pitt, but I look like this person is this okay. This is something you need to spend more time with on women, is embracing their shape and size and having them work for them. I love gyms and I love 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 gyms. I can't hear her talking to me, but I don't care away from baby. He's got a great butt, so I don't know what to do. But anyway, she had this great law a while ago that said um, she encourages women to be kind of object and strong. So she created this, you know, I'll find a story about her and her girlfriend, they were um, doing pill sprints, and um, her friend says, you know, you're really good at pill sprints, and Jen said, yeah, yeah, I really am, I'm good at pill sprints, where typically women would be like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not good at this, and it's kind of stuck, I get that. And it, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the video, and I'm not really good at saying videos, but um, presentations where it's like one of women, and they're all like, you know, the women will compliment each other, and the girl's like, oh, no, like, oh, Susie, you're her hair looks so great. And I was like, are you kidding me? It looks like I just got out of the shower and didn't wash it or didn't blow dry it and it's all frizzy. Or this other girl's like, oh, you look so great in this dress. She's like, I bought it at some gym for me. 
you know, stuff like that, and then their heads all explode, and the one girl comes along and says, thank you for the compliment. And their all heads explode. You can't, you know, accept the compliment when you're a woman and you're hanging. So Jen's goal for women is to say that it's okay to be strong. So if someone says to you, holy cow, you're really good at push-up. I uh, think you did like five bodyweight push-ups with, with great form, and I feel like, I suck at it, couldn't do 10. So she's trying to encourage women, like, build strength and be proud of it, no matter what it is. So say thank you for the compliment. So we want to be strong, and we want to apologize for strong. Be awesome. It's not like you're being a narcissist. You're just being accepting of what you have for strength. So creating strong women is a good thing because it only intimidates weak men. And there's no tool more effective than the empowerment of women. So creating strong women empowers them. Strength comes in mind and body and soul, which makes us more powerful. So I was telling Luke, yes, I wrote the book, The Rules of Lifting for Women, and we were originally going to call the book, well, Luke was going to originally call it, but I'm taking away Luke. He was going to call it Live Like a Man with a Goddess. And so that was the tagline of the book, you know, Live Like a Man. But that was originally the book, because I had all my like, files saved on the computer, and all the way on. It turned out to be another new rules book, and that's wonderful, so it fits in. But the premise of the book is that women should train like men. But I'm going to argue, and I, I believe he's right, I believe that we should train more like men, but we should train like women. What do I mean like that? Well, first of all, let's just understand all the factors that play into making you a strong person. So first of all, genetics. You know, you have, like Lou was explaining, you know, the bigger people tend to populate with the bigger people and senior people. So the strong people tend to make stronger children. Um, so if you take your parents, it'd be great, but it's how we can make her go to um, Training, you do need to work hard and play hard, so you can overcome genetics with smart training. You do need to rest, unfortunately women don't rest. Actually, most, most of our Americans don't rest. I kind of wish I was European because my, uh, my former PhD colleague when I said, you found this in Portugal, and he told me like in August in Portugal, in Portugal. In Portugal, they just go to the beach. Everyone in Portugal just all businesses shut down and they go to the beach. And I was like, that would be awesome. But I think we work harder than summer. So, but rest, as we all know, is just as important as training. Practice, practice, practice. Keep doing it and do it better. Select the right quantity, quality of food. So eating the right things. I'm a person who loves to eat and who does play in. Um, yes. What would you want cake? Cake. Cake makes you drop, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any kind of cake, particularly like carrots. Chocolate? Um, well, I'll take you to a food library and go for the vegan. It has sprinkles. My, my daughter loves sprinkles. Like, if it has sprinkles on it, she'll use. There's sprinkles in it? Okay, that makes you stronger. Okay, and then gender women versus men. So, can women be just as strong as men? And what are the differences in strength training advantages for women? And then mindset, if you think it, you can be it. And that's the biggest factor that holds women back from being stronger, is all in their So we actually do have quite a strength advantage, we women. We, um, the research shows us that women actually recover quicker and their mind is the exercise than men. Um, we have less accumulation and fast removal of the anaerobic byproducts like AMP, um, lactate, purines. And women are very well suited for strength and power training despite having less testosterone because of these recovery advantages. So one of the research studies that we pulled up for the rule of living, um, <coughs> of physiology, um, or, and not this study, but one that has grown off of it, is that the recovery of women compared to men is much faster. So the faster functional recovery um, means that you can get under the bar faster than a man can, and therefore you can create a greater growth hormone environment when you can get back under the bar and do your thing versus if you rest longer. So there's actually research show that like toxic environments to create more strength and size and similar thing. Less rest between the sets can actually create more strength and size. Women can do it better than men. Um, so Joan Ells, who is actually one of the world's strongest women in 2002, was um, hoping that she can actually handle more volume and intensity than most men. She does three to five sets for every one of theirs and you do the same window of time. And that has made her quite a strong woman relative to other women. I mean, she's a real strong woman. Um, Molly Galbraith, who is a girl strong, strong. I don't know if she has a picture of a book like there, don't we? No, it was a good I thought it was a good one. Question. 
So women can achieve quotes because women typically have more volume and train at a higher percent of their max more often than guys. But it's very true. It's not just the science that said that the training women who train do say this as well. Maybe if Molly's wearing her shoes, she would be. So, it could be either here. Um, my girlfriend, Jenica, who I, uh, she trains up at my facility at, at Vernon, and also she's a very accomplished drama. It's a big one photo, sorry about this. But her and her husband both do strong line training. She says, when training the same sets, reps, and percentages, these are the between my husband and I. I'm able to complete my training faster, require less rest between sets, between exercises, and feel ready for another set. I recover more quickly between training sessions and able to handle a greater exercise load on a weekly basis. I can work at a higher percentage of hard one around for a given set by what it's Now what all this tells us is that when you're designing training programs for women in strength training programs, you don't need to tell them to be sit for five minutes to set. You can actually get under the bar faster, and that will make you a better coach, and also keep the girl that you're working with more um, into the training session than, than losing her attention and losing her at the time. So keep that in mind. When you work with women, they're going to have a different, different approach to training which is going to be more advantageous for them, but that's what's going to make them better and stronger. So this is one of the reasons why women love CrossFit. And I, I'm not saying I'm a fan or not a fan of CrossFit either which way, but women love CrossFit because of the volume and the power. There's low rest, you know, you're, you're intense, you're intense, you're intense, and a lot of these women are also a little bit famous, but um, they are strong. And it's, it's a very popular thing for them and because of this, low rest time and just keep, keep going and lifting heavy and creating confidence, creating uh, an environment that supports strength. And all of this stuff is, is great. And that's one of the things I do love about CrossFit and I do programs, but what they do to create powerful, strong women is keys to all the things that women are good at, but also what the women need. So that's what you can do with your own training and your own training facility. So um, there is a little bit of a difference. So when you get to advanced clients and Mark Rousseau so in his book, Practical Programming, does say that it may not be true that women um, don't may not be able to use this higher percentage of the one around the May not. So if he says women don't have the same level of neuromuscular efficiency as men, and they can use a higher percentage of the one around the rest, and then probably he says their one around performance is not as efficient in demonstrating their true absolute strength. So they may not actually, that what they calculate as their one around may not really be their own. So if you think that you can train at a higher percentage of one around, it's not really your one around when you're at an advanced level. So it, there may be this, that rest and uh, uh, training at a higher intensity than men may not necessarily be true if you're on a different level. But Jill Mills, who's very high level athlete, trained at a very high percentage of one around with less rest than more often. So it, it depends. There's, there's not exactly a scientific answer to this. Um, Mia Shanks, who does a lot of stuff with strength training for women, um, she says that she does see that you know when she's creating training programs for women, initially women can have more volume, but as they get more advanced, they can't do that, and you just have to back off and give them more rest. So it really just depends. But I still find that even when I get to personally advanced clients I work with, they can, they still don't want to use their own volume as men. Um, now, in terms of training for women, you know, why women shouldn't train like men, classically it's known that women have lower uh, upper body strength than men do. Um, their, their, women, their upper bodies are much weaker. And so, in a women's training program, you do need to spend more time developing upper body strength. Like, it's very rare that I'll have a female come into my gym and just automatically bang out awesome push ups. So, you have to know what all the progressions of a push up are in order to get her to the point where she can do push-ups as well as, I'll say, the guy can. Because guys typically just, okay, well, I can do push-ups, I really have to check that usually. But women, you have to under teach them. And it is related to core strength, obviously, and, uh, and, and strength in different areas of the body. But you do have to say, okay, well, we'll start on a high box, and then we'll press down, we'll start on doing negatives, we'll start on doing um, just, you know, training the core to keep you strong in your, High plant hold and larger than window. So women, you know, you're not going to say, okay, go and bench press X amount of weight just many times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You've got to build them up to that point and then teach them how to do this. Because also innately, women don't go in the gym before you see them usually and, and are like, yeah, bench day. You know, it's, 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 it's
the, you're not going to see the bench presses taken up by women on Fridays. What is bench day, right? Monday. Monday. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> was, I was in the gym yesterday. All the bench presses were taken up. It's all guys. So whatever. So um, women need more education on training their upper bodies, but they also need to spend more time on it and also start at a lower point than men do. So the exercises that you're going to do with your female clients are very dependent on the woman. And yes, okay, there are women that can go up there and you know, bang up push-ups right away, but typically you're not going to have that. So upper strength versus lower strength, time and attention you're going to spend on upper body development versus lower body development. Their glute strength versus quad strength, typically, you know, we've heard a lot of women tend to be more quad dominant and quad strong than men, and that may be some of the reasons we've seen uh, or for ACL tears and injuries and soccer and whatnot. No one really knows the answer to that quite yet. And balance and stability. stability. Women have, typically tend to be more flexible and more stable than men. So you do have to spend more time, especially a woman who's had a child. When I talk about pelvic floor and stability, talk to a woman that had, or kids, but a vaginal birth. A vaginal birth like destroys the pelvic floor. A lot of times, jumping jacks pee your pants. I did it in front of my class by five. Awesome. So, and I thought about it afterwards. I made me feel better about myself. But um, the strength that women will lose after having children is something that you're going to have to address with a female client. So, again, your training for her for a woman is going to be different than the training for her for a Okay? So, what the experts also say as well is that women also need to spend more time on explosive power um, and or explosive strength to enhance greater muscular force development and to reach, like, you guys all know, the size principle small motor neurons, large motor neurons. Women don't spend a lot of time in that power training zone, so to achieve you know, the, the size principle that we all learned about in school and all our strength training classes, to hit all those muscle fibers, you gotta train throughout the whole spectrum. Women don't typically tend to train in that spectrum, so getting them in that area more often is gonna be very important for them and achieving more growth and strength than they would if they're just doing 12 reps. I remember going in the gym with one of my girlfriends, and she's like, shouldn't I have a shit? Isn't it just 12, 15 reps? Like, every six weeks? Three sets of 12 to 15, I'm like, talk about some threes, fives, you know. Yeah. And women also, one thing that women want and do need is stronger butts. So, sadly, I mean, all of us probably need stronger butts, and I think everybody needs a bigger butt, in my opinion, but, you know, my boyfriend, I'm always telling him to get a bigger butt, but. Um, uh, Brian Contreras' book, Strong Curves, does a really great job, and he does, is one of the best books out there, recent books out there, other than the book as a training book for women for teaching great strength training programs. And um, I, I got the opportunity to write the board for that book. And it was really great how this has come, come such a long way with strength training for women that we can now have a book out there that's teaching them how to get thrust and putting barbells on their on their hips. Make sure there's a barbell pad there because it and women when they go back to their husbands or boyfriends the bruises right there after working with you. That's so women tend to say that um, in terms of what women's recommendations are. So my Molly, when I asked her what women need and what women want, she says that women tend to need more upper body work, okay, specifically upper back work. And the reason for the upper back work for some women is chest size. So if they're if they have a large chest, they're gonna have to work on you know upper back strength. Um, and also just a simple fact that women don't spend a lot of time trying to build like huge arms and chest and back, so you're going to spend more time with them in your training programs. And my friend Chris Adora has with her second child, she's just had her third already, and she has this really very fantastic gym in her family in Connecticut. And she says that women want nice squats and abs, so people can have this works that deal. So I know it's very like muscular, muscle specific, but there are certain things that women want that guys don't really care about that much, and you're going to spend more time with those that have these goals of And then I will tell you that women love hit things. So guys, guys not so much. Like I don't have women text me, Cass, can we hit the bag today in class? Are we using the sledgehammer today in class? Like what's happening? Like, what do we do? Can you hit something? Guys can punch walls, okay? Women it's not so cool to like put their foot fits through a door. But but so if you let them do things they like, and this is part of the power development that Dr. Kramer refers to. So getting teaching them how to use a sledgehammer, and I should say that how because a lot of women don't really know how to use one, and when you empower them to 
learn how to use a sledgehammer. I have one girl, she's like, I cut the wood this winter, and my husband didn't have to do it, and it was awesome. And she was like so proud of herself, and I was like, you know, chop wood, it's great. So, but because of the training we did in my gym with the sledgehammers, and there's, you can get women to learn this, you know, they have to build their own right training too, but it makes them feel awesome when they can. So, um, and punching. I mean, women don't need to go to the bar and they can punch people out, so it's allowed them to do that. Okay, and lifting their own bodies. Women have a harder time lifting their bodies than men do, which is the way it is. Even though we are smaller and lighter, it's still a struggle. When you get a woman to do her very first unassisted chin up or pull up, she feels like superwoman. And it is awesome. So, training a woman to teach her how to lift her own body weight is super, super cool. This is a thing for me doing a pull up like way back when in the day when I would wear that gym. <laughs> well, not wear that gym now. And then the other thing that women have that men don't is a menstrual cycle. And if you have a guy who has a menstrual cycle, you may want to drink with her. But <laughs> there are days of the, a woman's menstrual cycle that make it more difficult for her to train in the gym. And you do need to be sensitive to that when it comes to programming. And then with yourself, women all. Most women know a few days before, whenever the day, first day of their period, it sucks. It really sucks. And a guy, no matter what he tries to do, cannot relate to menstrual cycle pain. Okay? It's just, it's not fun. Like, you can think of that multiple times by a very big force. Okay? So, that doesn't make it very comfortable for training. So, the first couple days, a few days before the day of a woman's menstrual cycle, she's going to feel crappy. They're going to have to change training, training programs. And I've had a few female clients like text me like they went through it not coming. And but there's other women that can work through it. But I get that. If you just have to be sensitive to the fact that this is a factor that someone may go through and be pretty painful. And hopefully you've got your nutrition dialed in so that they're not having such a hard time. But it's gonna change how you're gonna program for them. And then the rest of the menstrual cycle they feel awesome, especially ovulation is actually the time a woman feels her best and she is her strongest. So my friend Kristen, who I actually train with, uh, she's my co-trainer at Fitness Revolution. She says that women I train aren't as spent after men as after the same reps and sets, even looking at the same body weight percentage. She said fatigue is definitely a lot different, meaning that women, like I said before, really recover faster and we're just more bad ass and that works just about life. But unless a woman is having her period, and that's when it becomes a big issue, especially if a woman has anything like endometriosis or PCOS going on. There, you're going to have bigger, bigger things to do. Okay? Now, how does the menstrual cycle affect exercise metabolism? Um, sadly, you know, not sadly, but just in reality, women have to train through all stages of the menstrual cycle. So it's not like we're like, oh, competition's coming up, I'm going to have my period today, so I don't have to worry about it during the competition. That's just the way it goes. So, but there are things that, there are uh, days of, the period, of your menstrual cycle that are better for and others. So, in the early follicular phase, so right during and after uh, your period, is when max oxygen uptake may be the lowest. So, it may not be the time to do really like super high intensity things, and that's probably why our bodies don't let us. And then, muscular strength has been shown to be actually greatest during menstruation, not day one, but if you are having, if you are lucky enough to compete like Monday three, sorry, I'm going to go the period, you guys are like, oh my god, so gross. But, oh. days like three, four, five straight days should maybe so it's time to but you can. So what do you do to train around your period? Well, PMS week is that week, like right before the period, guys known as the bitchy phase of the menstrual cycle, and uh, girls want to do punch in the face. But um, days 21 to 28 is when women experience more food cravings. How many women try to play chocolate right before their periods? And lots of food, just in general. Okay, so right before, um, food cravings, having low energy, water retention, um, and low serotonin and high progesterone. It's not like a super motivating time to train sometimes. And that's just where you can take your training volume and intensity down, but continue to train, obviously, to encourage your clients and yourself to still eat well as well as you can. And understand that the increased calories that you are consuming are actually for the physiological system.